Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Ratner. As part of our how-to series, we're going to look at the nature of anger, how to understand it, and how to channel it within the three columns. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I'll get back to you personally. So many of you have already read Sarno. It's a big part of the basis of the work that we do and what we know. And as many of you know from that, anger can play a crucial role in getting better from mind-body symptoms. He talked about something called the reservoir of rage. Um, and it's a key concept to think of the difference between rage and anger. Everybody has both, actually. But it's really a, about degrees, degrees of intensity. Rage is when anger gets so so big that the primitive feelings we have feel more threatening. That's a big part of rage. But to get better, we need to be more comfortable with rage especially, but anger in general. And I'm going to talk about why we tend to not be as comfortable with that and how it plays out. I did want to talk about this idea of the reservoir of rage, though, that Sarno talked about because it took me a while to understand two different ramifications of it that he doesn't outline that way. Um, the way he talked about it, it it felt confusing to me a little bit, and that's not a criticism of him, but it's these are complicated pieces of information. But he seemed to be talking about it in one way where just enough buildup of anger could get you to the point where symptoms could happen, and I think that is part of what he was saying. But it also is the case, at least I have found, that one particular issue can get you there all by itself. And so it's important to know that it can be one thing and it can be multiple things. As I talked about last week in the contradictions video, it can be more than more than one type of thing and you need to know which applies when. So sometimes you need to look for a buildup of anger and sometimes you need to look for a specific symptom. But despite all the talk about anger in the mind-body world, what we do with this isn't, isn't well explained a lot of the time. So I thought that I would see if I could correct that some. Many are left with the feeling that once we discover, okay, we're supposed to be angry, they think we're supposed to be angry, but what if I'm not? Or what if I'm not aware of it? Or what if I don't recognize it? Or what if I'm angry, but I don't know what to do with it? I've had all kinds of questions about this. Some people ask the question, well, okay, am I supposed to stay angry? Or do I talk about it? Do I forgive? Do I hold on? Am I supposed to be able to let it go? Does it just need to be understood? Should I take action to alleviate it? You hear all the questions that can come up. And that's the reason I'm doing this video is because I feel that it's not really well explained what to do about anger. So let's talk about anger as it relates to the columns. So of course, anger is in the emotions column. This is probably pretty obvious to most of you. Anger is an emotion and it's going to affect things. It can be both in you and from others that can lead to emotional pain flare-ups. But it can also lead to doubt. Um, the reason it can lead to doubt is that we can doubt whether we should be angry. It just brings up questions. Should I be angry? There's too many questions. You just heard them. What do I do with it? it, it in a way, by trying to solve the emotions column through the anger lens... Uh, I'm thinking about Sarno specifically, but all the people that followed also, I think have thought about it purely in terms of emotions when we need to also think of it in terms of doubt, the confusion of what to do about this. It also is crucial for freedom in the power column. So in the next how-to video, which will come out next week, I'm going to talk about aggression from others and how to deal with it. For today, I'm going to focus on what to do with our own feelings of anger. And I, I was originally doing a video on aggression in general, and I realized these are two different topics. So I split them into two. So let's talk about what happens with anger in the emotions column. Dealing with your own feelings of anger is a conundrum that can lead to symptoms, especially if you condemn it just at all, or if you're not aware of it. Those two things, and it can be both, you can be unaware that you're condemning it. Those things tend to lead to some of those bigger themes in emotions leading to symptoms. Some goodists and pain sufferers do not even like to think about or recognize aggression. And that's part of the reason anger plays such a, a, a key role in a lot of pain sufferers is that it is getting condemned. But it can be deeply important and useful. 
And that's really going to be the focus of this video once I explain some of the background of how I think about anger. When it comes to the doubt column, as I mentioned, anger can play a role there too. It can lead to a lot of fear because it's such a big emotion and you can be not sure that it could rupture relationships and things like that. It can lead to guilt, uh, especially when it comes to parents or kids. These things can lead to a lot of guilt because we feel we do feel angry, but we feel like maybe I shouldn't or maybe it's not allowed. And it can even lead to just doubt in general, like I said, about what do I do about this? So <clears throat> the doubt can, can also be about ourselves and our basic goodness. Or it can be about the worry that being clear on things and not having doubt may make someone else upset. So the worries about anger can play a role in whether we are able to resolve doubt. And we will get into that more. In the power column, I would say that anger, while it's very important in the emotions column, it's especially important in the power column. I think it's the most key in the power column, and I will explain why. First, let me say a couple things, and then we'll get to how to use it in the power column, and that's when you're going to see why it's so important. So within the power column, we naturally have the question, is it safe to be angry? Usually what happens from a very early age is as kids, we get angry and you know, the grownups that were around don't like it or other kids don't like it. So they, they kind of push that away and we get the message. It's bad in the power column. We can have the feeling if I'm, if I'm angry, you know, is that going to get in the way of things and, and that will bring down power in, in our, you know, worries about it. But there's also the other side. If I become powerful, will anyone be angry with me? So anger and power really relate to each other quite a bit. Let's talk about what is important to understand about anger. These are just some general concepts about anger that are important to keep in mind when you're thinking about it. First of all, we need to remember that a lot of anger tends to be unconscious because society is so condemning of it. And it gets channeled in certain ways. And I'm finding that as I look at it, there's plenty of anger to go around in society. We see it all the time but it's getting channeled only in certain directions and it doesn't tend to get channeled in ways that relate to our personal feelings about ourselves. Instead, it usually gets channeled into righteous causes. Um, and we can feel righteous on either side of an argument. This is why politics are so awful for so many because we, it's, that's where anger is sanctioned, but it's not sanctioned in most places. So it all gets channeled into there. We're going to talk a little bit more about how to channel your personal anger in the ways that work. Anger, though, can be with yourself. It can be with others. It can be with the universe, the feeling that the universe is unfair, with circumstances. Or it can be with your symptoms. Of course, those of you suffering out there, we all get angry at our symptoms. I'm not angry at my symptoms anymore because now I'm past enough of it that I've gotten enough relief that I'm not so angry at them. But I also now can see it as a communication, and that helps. Most people spend the most time with anger being actually unconsciously angry with themselves, sometimes consciously so, but a lot of times there's a lot of unconscious anger at the self. But because we don't want to feel so bad, anger often gets taken out on other people because of conscious anger. We find a conscious anger point and we latch onto that and take that unconscious emotion and go there. Anger is also very, very uncomfortable for a lot of people. So much so that they will not only keep themselves from being angry but they'll try to keep others from being angry. I'm sure that many of you have experienced this when you have let anger out. People then get very condemning of you for being angry. And that is usually because they are condemning it in themselves. Anger is the number one most condemned emotion. It's not even close. Uh, well, actually, I would say there, there's some closeness because um, sexual attraction also has elements where people can be very condemning of it. But even so, I would say it is not nearly as condemned as anger. People tend to judge anger all the time because they judge it in themselves. Another thing to know about anger is that this will sound very obvious when you hear it, but it's a good way of thinking about it. Anger can lead to separation. And that's why it feels so dangerous. We, we often really don't know what to do about it. So we're going to get into now what to do with anger. But I do want to say one thing. Anger can also be a way of being in your own corner. If it's if it's channeled the right way, it's a form of self-empathy. 
Because being angry is basically saying, I don't like what happened to me. That's not okay. I'm going to do something about it. Or maybe I'm going to back myself up. So anger has its important uses. And we're going to talk about that. So what do we do with anger so we can reduce our symptoms or use it well? Well, the beauty of mind-body thinking with respect to anger is that we only need to know about it, not necessarily do something about it. Just knowing about it in terms of getting rid of symptoms is often all we need to do. But I want to go a little bit further than uh, what Sarno said about it because I don't think that people are getting enough guidance in how to know about it. Knowing about it is the key, but we need to know about it in the form that I build for the emotions column. If you haven't seen those videos, I would go back and, and find the videos on how I articulate emotional themes, but I'll sum it up for you now. It's broad topics, really big topics, high stakes issues, but it also has to be specific to, to the form of your life. Sarno talked about the broad topics. He talked about the high stakes issues. But of course, because he can't talk about an individual mind, he didn't talk about the specific form in your life. Even so, I think you need to know getting specific is a key part of being able to know your anger well enough to actually reduce the symptoms. These, this is emotions column work. Here's an example. Um, I could say, I'm making this up, but I'm, I'm angry that this teacher, let's say, didn't recognize my contributions because I wasn't recognized as a kid and this makes me feel doomed to repeated disappointment and rage. I did actually have, everybody's had this experience, but um, I had a lot of teachers totally recognize me, but you can hear that in this example, it's very specific to what's happening in my life, but it is linked to those broad high stakes themes feeling doomed to repeat disappointment and rage because I wasn't recognized as a kid. Those are big, big topics, but it's attached to a specific thing. So that's one way that I differ from Sarno uh, in this regard, is that I'm getting a little more specific about what it is you need to know. Another way that I differ from Sarno is that I not only think we must know about the anger to affect the emotional discharge of the symptoms, but I also feel that anger can be a very, very powerful tool to help you. Accepting our own aggression as having a good part to it is incredibly important. So anger isn't just this conundrum that we have to struggle with. It is also something where if we can accept it and we can see that there are good parts to it, and I'm going to show you how that works, then there's something we can do about it that's totally different. And that relates to the power column. So <clears throat> one way I think about things is that everyone's world is a question of aggression and what to do. In a way, a lot of things boil down to that. There was a therapist uh, and theorist in psychology, Donald Winnicott, who happens to be my favorite of the theorists uh, from the old guard. And he talked about the, f the phrase, I am, as being the most aggressive statement one can make. It's like you're saying, I matter. And so aggression is a way and anger. These are ways of being in our own corner. It's necessary. If we don't have aggression... The world makes all the choices for us. So that's the thing. You can use anger and aggression and channel it the right way. So now let's get to the fact that channeling aggression is a very important action step. When I talk about action steps, we, we go to each column and then we talk about what, what do we do. So channeling aggression is an action step that you can actually use in all three columns. And I just need to talk now about how to do it. So for one thing, <clears throat> if you're going to channel aggression in the right way in the world, you need to watch out for the aggression of other people. Now, that is what I'm going to talk about in the video next week on the how-to. How how do you watch out for aggression from others? How do we even recognize it? Because it comes in so many different forms. And then what do we do with that aggression from the outside? But for now, we're sticking with how to channel our own aggression, things we know about ourselves to bring to the outside world and to our own, our internal world in ways that work. Again, I'll talk about this more next week, but to keep the aggression of others off of ourselves, we need to be able to recognize it or it ends up getting dumped on us. The thing about anger is if it's done well, it's a choice to not blame ourselves. It's a way of being understanding towards ourselves. What do we do with it? That's a different thing. But we do need to make the choice to know our stories, our, our core narratives. I talk about that all the time. But if you know your core narrative 
that allows you to be in your own corner about it. And that is when anger becomes self-empathy as opposed to self-hate or externalization where you take it to other people. So here are some ways of thinking about anger and how to channel it. it. These are ways that can help you know what to do with it. When you're in a situation where you are angry, let's say you're angry with another person. One thing that you need to remember is that their anger, if it's getting directed at you, is between them and themselves on their own journey. And in a way, you can take that as a key point that you can carry forward with yourself. You are entitled to the anger that you have. You had lots of experiences, I don't care who you are, that would have made you angry. And it's important that instead of thinking about it as an interaction between us and the world, to think about it as, how how am I going to support myself in this? Am I going to believe that I I have a right to be angry about it? And the answer to that actually needs to be yes. That doesn't mean we walk around being angry all the time, but you have to be in your own corner. This is why it's so key to not losing power and not having symptoms. You need to use your anger internally. It doesn't have to be outward at all to prevent the loss of power. Anytime I feel angry in a situation, one of the first places I go to is, what would be the powerful choice here for me? And it's often counterintuitive. The powerful choice is not often to go and attack the other person. That frequently is not the powerful choice. So we need to think about how can we be powerful with ourselves in our own anger. And a lot of that involves self-empathy. That is a way to be powerfully angry. If we understand the power column correctly, one person's power has nothing to do with another person's power. And this is important too. You can be powerful without it threatening anyone else. We can all be powerful at once. And in fact, this is the goal. If I'm doing a good job conveying these mind-body issues and how we should live with them, the goal would be for everybody to be powerful. It's not just about me being powerful. It's about you being powerful and your friend being powerful and your family members being powerful. But we're all on a journey ourselves. And so we need to work towards that power within ourselves. Here's another another way of thinking that's really important about anger. You need to remember that the stronger you are, the more likely you are to be attacked. I have thought this for years, um, but you know I have found it to be more and more the case. I've learned more about it in, in recent years as well. And the people I connect with the most deeply understand this. So in a way, you could take a kind of weird pleasure in attacks because it is evidence of your strength. They wouldn't be attacking you if you weren't strong. So you need to remember to enjoy your strength. That's another way of thinking about the anger that roots you in a good experience with yourself. When you stand firmly with you in your own corner, the attacks actually will lessen. It's a very weird thing, but I have found it to be the case. The stronger I feel within myself, not not the stronger I convey myself to the outside world, but the stronger I feel inside myself, the more people sense that I'm at peace and they can't move me off my power, and so they don't bother to attack. Another way of thinking about things that I think is really important is, uh, I talk about this a lot in the power column, the juxtaposition of power and goodism. The goal is really to be both. You, You can use anger to become powerful, and you use that power for good. So these things all align. Anger is not the enemy here. It can be brought in for powerful usage. This is a huge part of resolving power and goodism. I want you to be both. I think the goodest of the world make a big difference in the world and I, and I want more of them. And I want I don't want anybody who is a goodest to think, oh, I have to stop being good to get better. That's not true. You just have to channel anger the right way. To stay powerful within yourself, you need that self-empathy. And so I was going to say you need self-empathy, not anger. But what I mean by that is you need self-empathy, not anger with yourself. Anger can be a form of self-empathy. So one of the ways that we can go about things to channel aggression and anger the right way, and this goes back to the black and white uh, video that I did a couple weeks back, you can use temporary black and white thinking to keep the anger off yourself and be fiercely in your own corner. Be really rooted in your story and what made you mad and what was not okay. If we can do that, we can use aggression as fuel. We take our core narrative We use the anger to make sure we achieve our goal of how we want to live. And it doesn't have to be 
at odds with other people. It's just a way of being powerful within ourselves. That's how to use anger. So don't let anyone have power over your core self and how you feel. You don't have to get caught up in does anyone have power over me in any way, but if it's affecting your core self, you need to think about how do I restore things within myself? The actions don't matter, but your feelings on the matter do. Those are the ones that matter. So here's the way that I use aggression. I like, I mean, I'm going to talk about this in the video next week about the difference between direct anger and passive aggression. That That's an important thing, but I think the best way to use anger powerfully is to feel, if you can feel confident within yourself and at peace, you will be able to be direct but kind when possible. Because the powerful stance is when you recognize that other people's aggression can't do anything to you. It's between them and themselves, and you have your own journey. So you locate their aggression in them, and you leave it there. Within you, you choose power. You use the anger for productive and constructive things. You think about, okay, what what do I do with this? What am I going to do about it in me to make my life better? And in that way, anger is fuel and it's energy. So I wanted to lay that out there as ways to understand anger and ways to use it because I don't think it's getting talked enough in the literature. So talked enough about in the literature. So these are great ways to think about things and I'd love to have more conversations with all of you. If you haven't already, click subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit like if you like what you're hearing, and put your comments below, and I will get back to you personally. Thanks so much for watching and listening.